we've talked about it quite a few things, and um, we're going to get a little bit personal now. Okay. Uh, Mustard Sensei, when you were in Australia last, um, I had a go at you, and um, you called me a miserable old bastard, which is probably true. Yeah, probably. Um, I got upset because you would tell my deshi to smile every time they stood up or, or something to that extent. And um, for me, that doesn't gel with Budo. You know, if, if you two people have a sword and one gets accepts the technique, gets defeated, you keep uh, you keep your face. You don't smile, you don't laugh. Mm. I never saw the Uchi Deshi being thrown by Kancho smile. Maybe the Kirobi Kai only. Not no, yeah. not time. Uh, I never saw you smile when you were taking Uke for Takino Sensei or Chida Sensei. Why now do you want the Uke to smile when you throw them? I don't want them to smile, but if it comes up, I, I'm happy because I know that I'm not hurting them, but I'm throwing them hard and I'm throwing them correctly. And I think when someone throws you hard and correctly, it feels good. And But I wouldn't want someone to get up and smile just because I told them to. But, I, that, that's what's happening, to be honest. Well, well, I mean, I don't mind if they do that, but hopefully, they never, again, it's a little bit different. They don't do it in demonstrations. You know, most of the people I've thrown in demonstrations don't smile. You know, I, I threw someone in the UK once and he lay on the mat laughing and said, oh, sensei, good technique. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, then, then you should take a book and you should take a, you should take a book and smack them. But yeah, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I've, I've had, I had a guy once I threw him too. And every time we threw him, he started giggling and laughing. And I said, what are you giggling and laughing for? You know I mean? But it just where, where do you draw the line? Yeah, good call. Except when it comes out, and I think if they're sincere, then it'll happen naturally. But if they get all because they're a bit scared or if they're nervous or whatever, that's different. Okay, I'll put my two bobs worth on the on the table here. If if I threw people and they got up smiling at me, I won't use them again. Okay. But that, as you said, I'm a miserable old bastard. So there you go. Well, yeah. Okay. Do you want to add anything to that? Um, again, I think if you're serious, um, in my guys, when I throw them in a class, they will smile because it feels good. Uh, and it, but again, it, it depends when you turn up the notch and everyone gets serious. And it's like you said, it is. You wouldn't smile if someone was trying to cut you in half with a sword. Right? Mm -hmm. And and I think there's diff there's there's levels within levels. Yeah, I I, I think so. Um, and and basically, if you're uh, if this is a good story for the for the people listening and it helps, um, most of my students never tell me what they're thinking. And even my senior student, Farshad, he doesn't usually tell me what he's thinking and stuff. But it, he told Mick Mercer Sensei in England an interesting story. He was saying uh, he always took my uke in class and then he would encourage other people to to take my uke so they can experience it. And he would actually actively kind of pushing them to take uke. But he told Mick, he said, but when he gets that look in his eyes, I push people away. I want to take his uke every single time. And then there's no smiling there and stuff like that. Uh, maybe, you know, sometimes we can take ourselves too seriously about trying to be more samurai than the samurai. But if you're, I'm doing a demonstration, I don't usually smile. But you see me do demonstrations where I talk and then I joke and stuff. Um, sure. But it, it's mind, body, and spirit, yes? Together. Yeah. 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 So yeah. If, I, I don't know what a smile is, whether it's mind, body, or spirit, but if everything's sharp and hard and then someone's smiling. Yeah. I mean, but they don't usually, not if it's sharp and hard that way. We, I've seen Gozo show the consciousness to be charming as hell with people in the audience. They're all laughing. Yuchi Deshi didn't laugh. Yeah, they don't laugh. You know, I mean, when... Why am I going to laugh then? Sometimes when I tell jokes in my dojo, people laugh, but Frashad doesn't because he's watching me. He's focusing on me. Oh, no, we've talked about this before. Yeah. yeah, I won't push it. Yeah, okay. So yeah. this leads on to another thing, right? Uh, here's a question, and this is a really, really good question. And I, I will tell you the reasoning of this person. He says that his 
he's frustrated with people who latch on to a teacher and say, that's my teacher. So he asked this question, and he's a good friend of yours and mine. There are a lot of people around the world who will say, my teacher is Mustard Sensei. What are the three or five things that you think they must embody to be able to rightfully say that? In other words, what are the things that define Aikido, Budo, for Robert Master Shihan, and that his students should be getting from him? Strong Komai, strong Kihon Dosa, strong attitude, strong strikes, strong blocks, focus and concentration. And, and 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 they should basically have been able, they should have been taken my uke. They should have spent time with me in my dojo, not just going to seminars. That's ultimately it, but they should, and they really uh, should be trying to do the techniques the way I do them. And then eventually they can make their own. But and, the, yeah, go you know, on. And, I mean, I mean, and, I don't, you know, they if, basically they should have some connection to me somehow, not just been to a seminar. Yeah, but I mean, everything you said so far has been technical. Strong, yeah. Kamai, strong, UK strike, strong. What about the the Riai part? What 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 about that that encapsulates Road Master Sensei's Aikido? I don't know. Well, if you don't know, who knows? Well, I don't know. Strong, powerful. Um, focused, energetic, dedicated, serious, joking sometimes, even if Tambu Sensei doesn't like it. But uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I just do my stuff. I don't, I mean, realistically, I don't know. It depends on people. If people say they're a student of mine, it doesn't mean they, they've been to a seminar and they've taken my UK once. They should know me. They should have some kind of a connection. And they should be interested in trying to do the techniques the way I'm doing them. And if they're not doing techniques the way I'm doing them, and they're just saying they got a certificate signed by me or something like that, or, you know, they I, they tested them, you know. Um, it's it's like, you know, people, I've, I've done favors for teachers and stuff testing, and people, if they say they tested, they were tested by me, sometimes I'm just kind of sitting there, you know, just watching which isn't the best, but it's good for the student, good for the host dojo. Okay, so to the anonymous person who wrote that question, I'm not going to push that anymore. So I'm going to leave it, accept that answer and leave it at that. My apologies. Um, That's okay. Well, who who is who is who is who asked the question so I can punch him? I, can't, time. Tell I can't tell oh. you. You know, my okay. is sealed, and it wasn't Rob Rosa. He had the first one. <laughs> okay, Rob Rosa was also very nice to me when I met him the last time I was at your dojo. You're never nice to me, but he was nice to me. You're never nice to me, so there you go. Okay, fair enough. Um, what's been your biggest joy in Aikido? My biggest joy? Mm. Um, it's not just one time, but the biggest joy I can really – say in terms of um, for I guess in terms of teaching is when I see people's eyes change and they realize that Yoshin Aikido is a pretty decent way to spend some time and and the best thing I can say about Aikido after 43 years is it's still interesting still a bit difficult but it's interesting and when people's eyes change and they realize that this is a worthwhile thing to do that's what gives me that's the real joy of teaching in, in terms of joy for me in Aikido, I'm not sure, Tombo Sensei. Just, I usually always feel better when I have my dogi on, even if I'm sitting at the kitchen table in the table of awesome. So <laughs> I always feel just a bit better in my dogi. And I can't explain almost, I don't know if I can verbalize it why. I just, when I do the techniques and the movements, it just feels good. Uh, hopefully, and, that, hopefully that makes sense. And your pet hates. And I know there's a lot. Okay, let's go three. Three pet hates. Three pet uh, people, people that uh, talk about training, but they're never there. Uh, people, uh, you know, people that, you know, um, they show, they don't even, they never show up. I mean, we had instances in England where people have driven for eight hours uh, for seminars. And then we go someplace to teach and people that are in dojos half hour, 10, 20 minutes away don't show up. 
I find that I find that really irritating. One time I was teaching in Toronto and someone said to me, uh, oh, Master Sensei, we're so pleased that you finally came to Toronto. And I called a good friend of mine, you know very well, Nick Mill Sensei in Mississauga. I called him over and I said, how many times have you had me to Toronto? He said, oh, three times a year for the last 20 years, Sensei. And I looked at the person, I said, someone's not telling you anything. That really irritates me. Uh, and the other thing is, the real paid hate, pet hate is uh, people that just, you know, don't train hard enough and just show up to get the rank. And that's all they care about is the rank and power. Mm. I just want to get the Kihon Dosa stronger and my basic technique stronger all the time. Okay. Um, I wasn't going to ask this. Okay. But I've got a message here. And and you, I think it's response to something you alluded to earlier in the interview. You said about, uh, basically, what's all this stuff about applying for higher ranks? I asked Darren Sensei this. Uh, I'll ask you this. What do you think about applying for a Shihan title, applying for, for rank? Uh, and in, there's a couple things about that. I don't think it's such a cut and dried question. I'm of your generation where you never asked to be for rank. You waited till they told you, right? Uh, I think the Yoshinkan's may be big enough now where, where, where people also, they have to ask because the Yoshinkan will, ne will never say it. For example, like you said, why is why was Darren Friend Sensei still Rokodan when four or five people he taught are higher than him? Because a little bit sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. You know, I mean, I don't, I mean, as I understand it, I think, uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think Darren Friend sensei he owes me $400 because I think he put my name forward for the Shihan and then I got it and I had to pay for it. Right? And and even so, and even all my other ranks, I didn't, oh, I didn't care. I didn't want a secret. It was me who did it. Oh, was it you? Wow, well, yeah. then you're a bastard. So you owe me $400. Yeah, sure. Like you're going to get it. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, and my Chihan certificate is, is signed by someone who we both don't like, so it doesn't really have any meaning. Let's not go there. But, okay. Uh, but, yeah, and then, like I said, what are they supposed to do? I mean, as I understand no. it now, if you want to hire rank and the Humbu Dojo doesn't know who you are, you just have to videotape some. I, I, I don't know Washington bashing, right? But I got to yeah. ask questions. Most people who are watching this, listening to this, do Yoshinkan Aikido or, or a derivative of the Yoshinkan, right? Well, you think you're not Yoshinkan Aikido? I'm, I'm not Yoshinkan, okay, so no. <laughs> well, then then you're like the people who tell me they don't do they do not do Yoshinkan Aikido, they do Renshinkai Aikido. <laughs> well, Sorry. Well, let's say, say I don't think you get any more Yoshinkan than you and Chita Sensei. I don't care what you say. You can be humble all you want, but. Okay, all right, we'll leave that one. But, okay. but if you if you say that because the ocean can has gone bigger, you can self apply, that's a fault of the system. That 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 I cannot accept that. You know, I, I well then then the other side. I mean, they tried it once and people complained. They, Hold on, Mori Uchiharu Sensei, who was a uh, Uchideshi and your yeah. classmate, right? Him and I went from we got our Godan in 1993. We got our Rokudan in 2001. That's eight years, if I count correctly. And we're yeah. both full-timers. I know people who are getting their six done three and a half, four years after their, after their fifth done. You know, and... and but, yeah, what, well, I mean, what's the answer? Basically, now it just seems you just have to have, just have, to have a pulse. Yeah, well... I mean... I mean, I, I mean, I think I'm a serious Yoshinkan guy too, Tambu Sensei. And the first time I, they, Kimeta Sensei, put my name forward for eighth dan, um, they turned me down. Which, which is okay because that means I saved some money. Yeah, well, I, then, I wasn't gonna, then, I wasn't gonna go there, but you, you've gone there, so let's go there. Yeah, but then, and then the next year when Kimeta Sensei asked him again about the eighth dan, they said that we gave him to, we gave it to him last year. So. so so I mean, what what's it say about an organization that cannot keep track of the number of eighth dance? And eighth dance is no no poultry. Yeah. Level. I yeah. mean, you get eighth dance from what I've seen on Facebook and stuff. You get eighth dance Aikikai. It's a really really big deal, and they have a party and they say congratulations. I didn't even get contacted. Nothing. And and I mean, 
I'm going to share enough of it and put my, my head on the line here. I've got nothing to lose, right? Yeah. I know who I got my grade from. Who did you get your grade from? I'd have to check. But, uh, but, yeah. but do you know but, who it's from? I think it, uh, it's, I've never met him. I mean, just, yeah. I, I, do I kill him? I don't think so, no. So a committee, a committee approved it. Well, that's we, part of it. And then also the committee, the first time they disapproved it. So, but, what's that? Who's in the committee? I have no idea. I would imagine. You're an you know, one of the most senior Yorkingan people on the face of this earth, and you don't know who's in the committee. No. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm yeah. not sure with that. that but, but, I mean, almost, I mean, that's just kind of semantics, Tambu Sensei, because the real thing, a little bit, that one thing I have with with, with pride, I'd, I'd like, I'd show you because, um, but I, I think if I picked up the computer, I'll screw everything up. The truth is, I have a fifth on certificate that's handwritten by Gozo Shoda. Yeah. And there, there's not many of those. And that, mean, that means a lot. I was told, if I want to be really kind of fancy, that I was told by one of the top Yoshinkan teachers that that was my menjo, that I was basically, I'd, I had arrived. Hmm. I asked Kira Sensei, you know, how many Menkyo Kaiden um, Kancho handed out? And he says, none. If you got a certificate handwritten by him, that was it. Yeah. 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 So so that I'm I'm proud of. The other stuff, I almost don't care because my responsibility is to produce good Yoshinkan students. And I you've heard me say this story before. It might be good for everyone if they haven't heard it. So come to my seminars. I got lots of stories. Uh, you know, when I was when never heard them before. Yeah. When I was leaving Japan, I asked Takano Sensei, how can I make sure that my Aikido is going to get better? And he said, you can't. And I went, oh. And he said, if I look at your students, I'll know how you're doing. And I thought, wow, that's fantastic. But a little bit of pressure there. But I'm trying to produce my students. And the truth is, uh, when when Inoue Sensei was in Philadelphia in 1999, there were 200 black belts to an older Kihondosa. He was walking around with them, and he pointed at one student and said, who's that? And I said, that's my student. So it has kind of maybe come full circle. But as also, you know, getting what we were talking about too, is other people, maybe they don't care. And like I said, in some, some dojos, I think, truthfully, if, you know, if you have a pulse and you hang around for – a couple of years, then you get it. Almost, you know, one year after Shodan, you get Nidan. Two years after Nidan, you get Sandan. And and if we're not careful, that's what happens. You get people who are Sandan and Yondan, and they don't show up for seminars, and they're not that strong. Uh, it's it's not that's what happens. That's what is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So we're we're going to move on here now. You're going to hear this right from the horse's mouth. All right. Master Sensei, what do you think about? all these online classes that are being done? I think people are doing a great job. Uh, Master I, Sensei is lying. That's not what he thinks. No, can, no, no, can, no. I think people are doing a great job. job. Can you learn uh, Aikido on DVDs? What's that? Can you learn Aikido through DVDs or online? No, but no, you can't. But it's keep, keeping people interested, keeping them up to date, and maybe getting them so they can do something. The truth is, you know this yourself, Tombu Sensei. All your students, all my students, know what to do. You know, and if you're not, if you're listening to this and you're not sure, Yoshinkan Aikido, we have six basic movements and three principles shuffling forward, pivoting, and shifting. If you're not sure what to do, just do those three or four or five times each time. And the truth is, I don't do that. So I can't expect other people to do it, except if you stay fit when you get back to the dojo, you'll be fine. But I think you're doing a great job with the online classes. Mick Mercer Sensei is doing a great job. Because you're giving, still getting people like you're still trying to keep them involved. Look, the, the, reason, the reason I asked the question, I was hoping for a bloody honest answer, but you didn't give me one, right? Is right. I, I do I do the online classes, and in my first class, I said you cannot learn Aikido online, but this yeah. is extreme measures for an extreme situation. We've yeah. never found ourselves yeah. in. We're yeah. adapted, right? Yeah. Now, I gave you the the opportunity to answer that question. You didn't, so I'm going to answer it. So, no, I, I think if, if you're yeah, right. I mean, I read a really good article where a high-ranking teacher said a book or video can only teach you what you already know. Yep. It, but, it, it, 
to remind you, but you need to be inspired. And your your videos are quite inspiring. I wouldn't go that far. But yeah, I would. but the thing is, everyone, you know, I've I've seen this on so many blogs, like, you know, is Aikido gonna change afterwards? If you cannot practice Aikido with a live person in front of you, you cannot do Aikido. Yeah, I agree. And, well, and you still, you still want to do something. I'll go you know? one further. I'll go one further. For all those people who turn up to seminars, who turn up to classes and practice with the same partner every time, you're an idiot. Yeah, I agree. You're but learning to work with one body shape. You're learning to learn with one learning to learn from one response. You're wasting your time. Yeah, I agree. And we've talked about that. But you know, I mean, uh, I mean, it's it's like. If people, you know, if people say to me, sometimes it's hard, but if people say to me, oh, what do you think about our group? I want to say, I'm not going to say you're shit. Even if I think they are rubbish, I'm not going to say that. You say that to me. No, <laughs> I say you're shit. That's different. <laughs> but, but you know, but I mean, the truth is, if they're serious and dedicated, then then it's just a matter of sometimes it takes a time for they get the right hints. But and but people need to be inspired. And what I tell people, and I don't like, for example, we're trying to sell some of the DVDs I did because if people are interested now, because maybe because of the online stuff, uh, maybe we could do that. And people have said to me about me doing online consulting. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, but the truth is, there's the three Yoshinkan. And I'm going to be a bit of a heretic here. There's the three Yoshinkan DVDs. And there's the two DVDs that Chita Sensei and the Renshinkai have put out that I've seen. I think there's three now, but especially the two. What else do you need? I mean, does you know that does for example, does the Yoshinkan world need another video of, of for example, me doing Ikajo? No. But they might need a video of me showing why I think it's important to do it this way and show some things at other entrance to do the technique, cross-step, shuffle, shuffle, cross-step, boom, boom. Those I think there's a real market for. It. And your videos where you're taking the sword and showing that relationship and doing pivots with the sword and stuff, it's brilliant. That's oh, you what people you watched that, did you? you must What's be that? Yeah, I watched it. <laughs> you must be bored as hell. No, I mean, I I need some to be inspired too, and I I admire the way you teach, and I love the way you teach. You're always mean to me, but I I because I still want to get better. And People you know, what he says in private. Okay, but but the truth is also, you know, people don't need to have a uh, a class when you do all the warm ups for the adults. For the kids, you got to keep them moving, but for the adults, they don't need to warm up and all the break falls and the hugging. I can't do break falls in my living room, but some teacher is still doing it. But uh, the, but the truth is, if you stay fit and if you're really interested, practice your kamai, shuffle forward, pivot, shifting, and punch and strike. I still, I got a heavy bag downstairs. I've been having lots of fun bashing away at it. You know, I really like that. I don't know. I just like hitting stuff. So. Okay. All right. So now I usually finish with two things, right? Yes. One, um, do you have a... Oh, you probably answered this already, but is there an exercise or something people should do or can do in this, you know, situation that we find ourselves in with COVID-19? I think uh, just doing Kamai, just, just keep doing Kamai, even if you're standing cooking, you're standing doing the dishes or just moving around. I like shuffling forward and pivoting and trying to work on that posture. And if you stay fit, and you know, and basically, if we're sitting around too much, you got to try to be a little bit, a little bit flexible. Find a, I mean, what I do, I find a bit of a, a nice yoga routine that's not that long on YouTube, and try to do that. I use that also. Mm. So, uh, if that makes sense. But realistically, the foundation of Yoshinkan Aikido is a kamai, and also sword swings. I think I like, I think I go in the back that can do some sword swings, not a lot, but. Right. Um, okay. Uh, look, I, I, Master Sensei and I, uh, we share a lot of, uh, there's a lot of commonality, but there's lots of differences too. He's a boring bastard. I'm not. I need to be enthused. I need different things in my life. I, I need variety. Um, you know, he's okay with drinking water all the time. I'm not. 
Yeah, fair enough. Oh. You said once, I mean, you you said once that, I mean, I have also said I've gone on record and I believe it. I mean, realistically, I could do Shomanuchi, Ikajo, Saichi, all class, every class. And you said it's because I'm special. But I don't think you meant special, like special, special. But that's okay. Special, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, before we finish, uh, yeah. and, uh, you get the last word on the show and then I'll, I'll wrap it up and stuff. So, please. Okay. Um, my last word would be um, thank you for including me in this. I hope I did or said something that made sense and maybe helped someone who's listening. I appreciate everyone listening and paying attention. Uh, thanks so much for organizing this, Tombu Sensei. And I'm glad to follow with with uh, Dangerfield Sensei, Marshall Sensei, Friend Sensei, and me, and Kel Sensei also. Uh, uh, I really appreciate it. And I'd like to say that everyone during this kind of strange time, please stay healthy, stay safe. And one thing I really miss is that um, I really enjoy the international travel where I get to meet people and spend time on the mat and off the mat. I really enjoy that. And I haven't been able to do that since I left England in March. And I really hope that uh, when this is all said and done, I can start traveling again. I really want people to know that I'm really looking forward to seeing them and training and practicing with them again. And I miss them. And thanks, everyone, who's always been staying in touch with me during this time. And uh, it's really been a, a real pleasure to watch these interviews, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Geez, take over the show, why don't you? No, sorry. Well, okay. Everyone, um, thank you, Master Tensei. I seriously okay. appreciate it. Uh, uh, everyone, if if you think we contradicted each, each other too much or whatever, it's because we really don't like each other. Uh, yeah. And for my money, I, I've never met. Uh, a nicer person or a better martial artist than Robert Mustard Sensei. We don't agree on everything. Actually, we disagree on quite a few things. But on the important things, we do agree. And um, I love the man. He's helped me a lot. And I will forever be in his debt. Um, next week, people, next week, um, I'm going to have a panel. Three female Aikidoka. Uh, all of them at one time or another were full-time instructors. And... Between the three of them, there's just under 60 years of experience. So, Gretchen, Jane, you got questions about to for female martial artists out there who've done it full time, who've done it a lot? Um, please write in any questions from anyone, male or female. Hey, whatever. Um, again, Master Sensei, thank you very much. It's been an honor and a pleasure. The pleasure was mine. I um, hope it makes sense. If if I offended anyone and if I came across like Yoshinkan bashing, I do apologize, but I think in this day and age, the questions need to be asked and they need to be answered. Uh, we're no longer back in the old days where the teacher said something and we just went off. On the mats, yes, off the mats, I think we need to know. We, we need to know the reason. We need to know why we do what we do and who we are. Thank you, Master Sensei. Thank you very much. Yoroshiku onegotajimasu.